Hey everybody, Josh here again. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be covering my top 10 beginner-friendly PowerShell commands. PowerShell is essentially a programming slash scripting language that's originally native to Windows, but you can install it on Mac OS and, and Linux as well. Pretty much like anything that you can do on the computer, anything that you can imagine, you can automate it in PowerShell in one way or another. I've used PowerShell for like every single one of my IT jobs and every single one of my cybersecurity jobs. And I even had a job where I like specifically like 90% of my time I was developing some big automation project uh, using like 100% PowerShell. So it's really useful to know at the very least if you're interested in IT or cybersecurity, I think this video will probably be interesting to you. Uh, at the most it will be like really helpful to you kind of opening your brain up to the PowerShell world. So let's go ahead and get started. So feel free to follow along if you want with your own like kind of environment or you can just watch and, and be entertained as well. You'll definitely get something out of it either way. So okay. So first thing I'll do, I'll just open up PowerShell ICE and I'll just kind of open it up on one side of the screen. And on the other side of the screen, I'll open up a Windows Explorer and I'll just go to the C drive. And then I'm just gonna make a folder here because we're gonna work with files and stuff a little bit. So I'll just make a fo folder called PowerShell Demo and I'll go to it, see it's empty. And then on the PowerShell command line down here, I'll just change directory to the PowerShell Demo folder like this, just so I can kind of have it here. Okay, so for the very first command, it's going to be git content, git content. And basically what this does is it reads all the content from a given text file, for example. So in our folder over here, I'll just go ahead and make like a text file like super quickly. I'll just call it hosts. And then inside I'll put like google.com, instagram.com, facebook.com, and I'll just save it. And then I'll say get content here. And then I'll just say hosts.txt and I will press play. And then you can kind of see simply here, it just prints these out to the screen. There's a lot of different utility for these. Like if you want to do some action to each one of the items in the list, you can you can do that. Uh, you can also, this is how you make a variable in PowerShell. You do like a dollar sign and then you, you name it something like this, like so. And then if you say play, then the script runs and you notice nothing got printed out, but actually the content of hosts got stored into this variable. So for example, if I go down here and type hosts and say enter, it will print out the content of this hosts file over here. So I use this like all the time because there's a lot of instances where you have to like read in some text from a file and kind of do something with it and print it to the screen. And then the second command that I use all the time is uh, the for each object command. If you're if you've done like other programming before, you can kind of think about it as a for each loop because that's essentially exactly what it is. But basically the for each command lets you iterate through a collection of objects. So what I mean by that is when we do like this get content and bring in like the hosts like bring in these th three things and say we want to like store it to a variable we can do we can then do this essentially for each object and then we can do like open close braces to indicate like the block of code where we do stuff in and then when we say like dollar sign underscore, this this represents essentially this dollar sign underscore represents each one of these. It's kind of confusing at first, but maybe you try to recognize what happens when we actually run the code. So I'll run this and it pretty pretty much looks the same. It just prints them out one at a time. But the kind of difference with this is it you have the chance to, to do something to these items before they actually get printed to the screen. So for example, we can do something like, something like this and then run this run this and oh, you can't really see it very good. Yeah, so background color white, foreground color black. It lets us manipulate this, this, these objects in one way or another. Like be, each time the loop iterates, it presents us with like, for example, the first time the loop iterates, this dollar sign underscore presents us with this, the second time this, the third time this, and then so forth. If there's more items uh, in your, the content that you got from here, if that makes sense. So for each object kind of just lets you do something with each object in the list of things. So we can do other things too. Like uh, we can say, for example, like this. And you can say host name, we did host name colon, and then the actual thing that's on that line, if that makes sense. So it's essentially a for each loop. I use this all the time in production scripts and stuff I do my personal projects. It's just like something you use all the time. And by the way, like as you're watching this, don't look at this and be like, Oh, man, I have to memorize all these commands. I have to memorize these like you don't have to memorize anything, just look at it and kind of acknowledge that it's possible to do and kind of just do your best to understand what's going on. And then if you need to remember again, in the future, you can always just Google 
Google like, oh, how to how to do for each PowerShell, like, oh, how to like read in text file PowerShell, and then it will come back to you at that time. So yeah. And then the third command that I use like all the time is outfile. And basically what outfile does is it essentially like takes something that's in PowerShell and then just outputs it to a text file. So for example, I'll just actually I'll, I'll leave this here for now. So you can say something really simple. My name is Josh, and then do a pipe out file and then you can press tab and then you can pick like the file path or I believe you can just if you want it to be in the same directory you can just start typing the name of the file s.txt and then if you say append it will add on to the file if there's something already there so I'll say append uh, and that's that's good enough so I'll, I'll just copy this and I'll do one more line this and I'll save it and then you can just highlight these two lines like this and you can click this play button and it will only run these two so I'll just play these I'll close this and then we can see that there's a, a test dot text file in here. So if I open this up, you can kind of see like what happened here. Like my name is Josh. My name, my name is Timmy. I use this all the time. It's really good for like writing logs. If you've ever opened up like a, a log file, there's like a date and like something that happened. It's really good for that kind of thing. So we can do something like here. We can go back to our, our hosts. I'll just like close this for now. We can go back to our, our kind of hosts thing that we did up here. And instead of write host, we I'll just do something like, uh, yeah, I'll just do this. So normally, if we run this, right, it just prints these three to the console, but I could do something like this. Uh, out put hosts uh, text. Now I'll append it, I'll save this, and I'll run this. And then we have like another text file over here called output hosts. And then it kind of matches what we previously had printing printing to the console. We just like redirected it to this text file here. Again, I use this all the time for like writing logs and, and just if I need to write something to a text file for whatever reason, use it all the time. So that is uh, out file, the out file command. And the next command on the list is test net connection. And you can think about this as kind of like a ping on steroids essentially. So I'll just I'll just type it and I'll show you. So test net, this is a great command by the way. Test net connection and then like I don't remember what the parameters are, so but you can always press tab when you're working in PowerShell ICE or ISC, and then you can kind of see the parameters. So we can say computer name and then we can just enter like you know something like google.com. And then I only want to run this line. So I'll just click this thing. And then you can see it kind of returned uh, this kind of basic things like computer name, remote address, this is IP6 address, Ethernet ping, su ping success, and then the, the latency essentially. So there's a lot more inside of this command, but it kind of, it shows you like a really high level summary of the status of the, the net connection that was tested. There's a lot of ways that we can see like the full detail of this. So we can, we can do like, I'll just assign this to a variable. So I'll say like post status equals, and then I'll run this again and basically it's going to assign the status of this command to this variable. So I'll run this and I can say, I can go down here even, I can say host status and then I can do a pipe and then I, I'll say like select everything and we'll say enter and it shows like much, there's like much, much more that you can see. A bunch of like DNS records and, and some other kind of information in here and it's kind of interesting. Uh, going back to this, there's kind of more stuff you can do with this. You can check if certain ports are open. So for example, um, port right here like i don't know if you've studied like security plus or network plus or anything but port 443 is usually like https maybe they're using a like tls or something like this so we can test if port 443 is open for google.com so we'll click here and then we can say tcp tests succeeded true when before it said like a uh, ping uh ping succeeded so now we're doing we're like pinging but it's over like tcp port 443 for instance so we can kind of take this even like a bit further and kind of integrate some of our other commands that we've used so instead of just doing like the individual like you know testing of google.com we can kind of erase this and then we can get rid of the stuff and then remember like this hosts thing we're reading in like these hosts like google.com instagram.com facebook so we can kind of set this uh for each loop or object to go through and like ping test like each one of those if that makes sense so remember if we just do like oh not hosts if we just do like dollar sign underscore and then run this it just prints out google instagram and facebook so if, if we want to do like a uh, test net connection for each one of them we can do something like this we can do test net connection computer name and this is our computer name remember the dollar sign underscore e represents kind of each one of these lines and then we can say port 443 and we can say 480 and then we can say like something like write host testing host and then dollar sign underscore and then we'll just do like a an empty an empty one afterwards. So you can kind of maybe guess what's going to happen with this and then we'll run it and then kind of observe what happens here.
So that went really fast. So basically we have testing host google.com and then it says like we see like testing host google.com and it kind of shows we tested Google over 443 and it was up and over 80 and it was up testing host instagram.com over 443 up 80 up and then Facebook 443 up and then 80 is, is true as well. So it's pretty interesting like what you can do. You can kind of think about how this might be useful if you have like a bunch of hosts you want to check to see if they're online or something. You have a big ass like text file full of host names. That's you know something you know, that's how you could use these commands in conjunction with each other to kind of do something useful that has a business case, business use case. And the next command on the list is uh, convert to JSON. So this command, it's not that useful unless you know what JSON is. Um, JSON is just op JavaScript object notation. It's kind of used to represent data in a certain way. And I, I tend to use it a lot in PowerShell because a lot of the items and stuff you see in PowerShell, they're actually objects. For example, for example, we'll, we'll take the hosts variable that we made up here. Inside of the host variable, if we say enter, you can see it's simply just like google.com, Instagram, and facebook.com. But there's usually in PowerShell objects, there's usually much more involved in that. And if for some reason I want to see like what's in the object, because I want to access it or read it for for some reason or another I, I usually use convert to json to kind of see what the object looks like if that makes sense so i'll just do a demo we'll show you like what it looks like so just normal host.com has this inside it but it can convert to json you can kind of see it has like much much more properties in it than you than you might have thought so it kind of shows like the value so it's essentially like a list of, of text it kind of shows like all this like information about it like ps path it's like an array right and it has like value of this ps path is this where like where it lives the folder it lives in is this the child name is this and like all this kind of other stuff so it's possible to to reference these things inside of here like you don't have to don't care about this too much but for example hosts it's it looks like it's an, actually an array so if i want to do like the zeroth element of hosts i can say enter and it, it actually like shows google.com and like the first one it's instagram.com it's kind of interesting to like look at what certain objects are and then you can see the structure of them then you can like access data and like manipulate them in, in, in different ways. So for example, if I do host zero and then I do convert to JSON, I can see like all this stuff. It's it's really crazy. This might be overwhelming to look at. So don't don't like worry about it too much. And the next command that's on the list is get date. And that does pretty much what you think it would do. So get date, you can say enter and it kind of spits out a date for you here, get date. And then you can you can kind of uh, get specific parts of the date by putting it in parentheses. Then you can say like get date dot date, or you can say get date dot day, day of week. And it says Thursday, right? Because today's Thursday. It's just kind of a useful thing to do. So for example, one way that this is useful is like if we want to write some kind of log, log file or something like this. So again, going back to our trusty for each loop here, we can add like a line in here that says, something like testing host well we're going to make a an output to a log file here with the date in it so we'll say something like testing host dollar sign underscore remember that represents each one of these lines dollar sign underscore dollar sign underscore every time this thing iterates we'll do this and then this is going to be like a log file so we're going to put like a date before the actual message that we're outputting to the log so we can do this get date yeah we'll just do this get date and then we'll do like a colon in a space and then we're going to output this to we're going to use out file again, we'll say out file, uh, we'll just name this host test dot log, something like this, and then we'll append it. So we'll run this, it's going to spit out a bunch of crap on the screen down here. And then um, it's also going to give us a log file over here based on this. So we'll, I'll just run this whole file, we'll just say run here. And the same thing happened out here again. And then if we look on our host test dot log, it pretty much just printed out this thing right here, this get date testing host, and then the host name. So we have the date, the time testing the host, and then the host and then the host name. I should, I should have probably put like a hole in here or something, but you you kind of get the point. Um, get date, you can use it to get the date. You can get like specific, specifically the year, the day, the month, like if you need to like manipulate the date in a certain way, I always do that with scripts because um, sometimes you need the date in a certain format. Uh, but yeah, get date, always use it like all, all the time. And the next command is a really easy one. Uh, it's just called start sleep. All it does is essentially pause the script for a certain amount of time. You kind of notice in this last log that we ran here, there's like not very 
much time in between the log entries, which is okay. But sometimes you want to slow down your script a little bit, especially if you're dealing with like APIs, or you're dealing with like a slow system or something, or you're processing like a large number of records where you can't just like dump all of them for one reason or, no reason or another. So you can do start sleep. So this is our loop here. So if I just do like start sleep, I can put some time in between like each time the actions take place in the loop, if that makes sense. So I can say like start sleep, and then you can say like seconds or milliseconds. So we'll just do like seconds and we'll say like two seconds, for example. And I'll, I'll just do something interesting here. I'll use right host again. And I'll say sleeping for two seconds. Background color, maybe I'll do black foreground. I'll do cyan just so we can do something a little bit more interesting. So basically this script is going to run. It's going to output this pause for two seconds. It's going to write out this testing host to the command line. It's going to log something and then it's going to test 443 and 80 for these three hosts that are in here. So I'll get rid of, uh, I'll just do 443. So I'll save this and I'll run it. We see, oh God, that's hard to read. I don't know why I said yellow, it's really weird. So you can see it's sleeping for two seconds, runs it, sleeping for two seconds, runs it, sleeping for two seconds, and then kind of runs it again. Now if I look in our uh, host test.log, you can kind of see what's been happening a little bit. You can see there's like exactly two seconds between these like tests for the most part. This is, this log format is bad, but anyway, you like get the idea, uh, the idea behind it. So yeah, that is start sleep. And the next command, I've been using it like all along this whole time. It's just essentially write host. Write host, I use it all the time to like output stuff to the screen. It's really useful because you can like make colors and stuff like the background color. You can do, you know, whatever color you think is cool. Foreground color, red. My name is Josh. It's just very useful like this. My name is Josh. Of course, you can just like forego this whole thing and just you can just do this in PowerShell and it, it runs still. But if you want to do something like add color to it or do something like this, you can you can use right host and you can do you can kind of customize it. It's really useful. Use it all the time. Of course, you saw me like using it already like in the very beginning, but right host and the last two commands, they're kind of they're kind of boring, but they're also like really, really, really useful. And if you remember, like if you want to memorize like any commands in this list, just memorize the last two. So this command, it's just called git command. It's it's very, very simple. So you can say git command. And if you don't remember a command, you can use git command to kind of find what it is. So for example, I'll use git command star right star. And then it shows all the PowerShell commands with the word write in it. So you can see inside of here, like write host, like if you couldn't remember the write host command, but if you just remembered host or just remembered write, you could use like git command to find it. You can pretty much find like any, any command like this, as long as you know, like what part of the command is. So for example, we can do like git command. If we want to like figure out how to reference the hard disk or something like that, we can do git command star disk star and say enter. And then and you see like all these different commands that you can do, like get disk, get disk image, whole bunch of disk commands. So you're, maybe you're like, oh, what does get disk do? You can say like get disk. Oh my God, let me shrink this and try it again. And it looks like it printed out a bunch of information about my, my hard disk, it seems like. We can do get disk select star, and then you can really see a bunch of information about my hard drive. So I, I have an NVMe drive. The size is probably on here somewhere. I did see it just like a second ago. You're probably looking at it right now. Oh, it's right here. This I, I think this is like half a terabyte. I think this is in bytes. But anyway, you kind of uh, get the idea like git command. Maybe there's like a command that has to do with the CPU. I don't know. Doesn't look like it. How about processor? Doesn't look like it. How about network? Whole bunch of network commands. Uh, by the way, you can get stuff about like the CPU and processor and PowerShell, but those just apparently weren't the right commands. But anyway, git command is, is really good. And that kind of leads us into our last command. So if you remember like any command in PowerShell, PowerShell, just remember this one. This is the, the git help command. You can always just type git help. And then for example, test net connection. And you can say like online like this. And oh, I guess like every command doesn't have an online aspect to it. So maybe we can do like, instead of test net connection, we'll do like git content. And then it kind of opens up a web page um, straight to the Microsoft docs that kind of shows you how to use this command. And it has like a bunch of examples in here of how it works, if that makes sense. So I, I use this quite a bit. Like if I, I know that I want to do something, I know it's possible, but I don't really know how I'll use like get help dash on 
whatever the command is like dash online and it will I'll like look at examples and kind of learn how to do it. But yeah, if you found that interesting, I have like this other video here that kind of goes through like setting up Active Directory and like setting up the infrastructure and like kind of toward the end, I, I go through this like long script where we like import and create a thousand different user accounts using PowerShell and it's relatively real world for the most part. Go ahead and check that out if you want to. Yeah, that's my top 10 PowerShell commands. I hope that it was useful. If you thought it was useful, please feel free to like and subscribe. I'm trying to get to 10k subs. So if you could sub, I would really appreciate it a lot. Um, definitely, I respond to everybody's comments all the time. So if you want to leave comments 100%, I'm going to read it and respond to it. Um, I also have Patreon if you feel like supporting me and I also do mentoring as well. You can check both of those things out in the description. But otherwise, yeah, thank you so much for watching this far and we will see you next time. Bye bye.